So today, Apple announced the new M2 system on a chip. One of the things worth noting here is that it was in November of 2020 that Apple released the M1 system on a chip. So it's been only 18 months since that release, and here we are seeing the successor of that, the M2. That makes a pretty remarkable statement that Apple is turning around the life cycle of these chips quickly. That speaks volumes about Apple's future intentions with its chip design. It is being very aggressive in its cycle pace, so we can expect to see this type of thing in the future, which means there's going to be rapid innovation now that Apple is designing its own silicon. And consistent with its previous chip designs, Apple is focused on power efficient performance, balancing speed with cooling and battery life. The M2 features 20 billion transistors. That's 25% more than the M1. They utilized a chunk of those additional transistors to significantly enhance the performance of the memory controller, allowing it to manage a bandwidth of 100 gigabytes per second. That's a 50% increase over the M1's memory bandwidth, and that is massive. It now supports up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory using the 124-bit wide LPDDR5 interface. Like its predecessor, the M2 features an 8-core CPU. Four of those cores are high performance and four are high efficiency. The caching has been increased on the high performance cores. Altogether, that gives the M2 18% greater performance than the M1. Apple has given the M2 two additional GPU cores for a total up to 10. It has a larger L2 cache and allows the M2 to perform up to 3.6 teraflops, 111 gigatexels per second, and 55 gigapixels per second. So in terms of its graphic performance capability, it's really off the charts. That allows it to perform its graphic operations up to 25% faster than the M1 using the same amount of power, and that's remarkable. The secure enclave and neural engine have been enhanced to the point that it can perform 15.8 trillion operations per second. That's a 40% improvement over the M1. So what does all of this mean for the average consumer? Should you go out and sell your M1 machine and upgrade to an M2? That doesn't make sense for most consumers. The M1 is still a solid performer, has great thermal efficiency, long battery life. If you already have an M1, you probably want to stick with that. Now, if you missed the M1 boat and you're still running on Intel hardware, now that is a good reason to upgrade. We can expect to see Apple follow up the M2 with an M2 Pro, an M2 Max, and an M2 Ultra. It's really a brilliant strategy to release that new chip for the mass market for the largest part of the user base, and then to increase the performance for those higher end users. The fact that the M2 is delivering so much more performance than the M1 and yet uses the same amount of power speaks volumes to Apple's chip design strategy. They are beautifully balancing performance with cooling and battery life. I love their strategy. I'm so looking forward to seeing what comes later this year. Well, there you have it. Those are my initial thoughts on Apple's new M2 ARM-based system on a chip. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on some actual hardware, putting it to the test and seeing how it performs in real life applications. Hey, I'd love to know your thoughts. Are you planning to upgrade to the M2? If so, which machine are you leaning toward? The MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro? Thanks a bunch for watching. Until next time, spread the love. Mm -hmm.